Hello everyone, my name is Sunita Kadiala and I'm going to talk about COVID-19 and the food systems and implications for nutrition. We all want um, healthy babies to be growing up to their fullest potential to be uh, as uh, children and adolescents and healthy adults who in turn give birth if they choose to to children that are healthy and, uh, and well nourished throughout their life. This is only possible with a lot of things in place, for example, good health care, correct information, wash, education, and being there for each other through collective action throughout the life cycle. One of the key inputs into nutrition is healthy and nutritious diets. These diets come from no other place than our food systems, which incorporates agriculture production, markets and trade systems, food transformation, consumer demand, and therefore the consumer themselves. Together, these processes determine our diet quality, which includes dietary diversity, dietary adequacy, as well as safety. Before COVID, about 40 to 70% of the labor force in low and middle income countries was employed in agriculture. What you we find after COVID since March this year is that there's been an estimated one third decrease in livelihoods and a one third decrease in incomes of people. Therefore, there has been a 20% increase in poverty in Sub-Saharan Africa and in Asia on South Asia on average. Low and middle income countries have always faced for, especially for perishable nutrient dense foods, such as um, the animal source foods, fruits and vegetables, a weak supply chains. And because of lockdowns and because of infections and disruption of formal and informal markets and production itself, uh, countries have seen food price fluctuations making, um, making nutritious diets rather difficult. As we all know, there has been a rapid increase in ultra-processed food consumption across the globe, but there is some emerging evidence that this might be worsening due to COVID. Before COVID, there were 135 million people food insecure, according to WFP, the World Food Program. And now there are about 260 million people who are food insecure, therefore threatening the diet quality of these people and therefore potential for uh, nutri better improving their nutrition outcomes. So given that there has been a disruption, just not to one system, but every possible system that we can think of, our hard-earned gains in improvements in maternal and child nutrition are under indeed under jeopardy. Recent estimates show that there has been a 14% increase in child wasting. This is of course not a surprise given disruptions to food supplies and therefore access physical and economic access to foods, the 30% reduction in essential nutrition services, as well as a lot of in misinformation around COVID and around COVID and nutrition also. In the recent article in The Lancet, the UN Health, uh, some of the agencies have put forward nutritious, safe and affordable diets as one of the most important COVID responses. They also point to the need for accurate information. What are some of the research questions therefore? Well, what are the COVID impacts on maternal and child nutrition diets? We think according to estimates, this is bad, but we really do not know um, the range of uh, or the extent of these impacts. And this is of course difficult to get understandably so when data collection itself is difficult. Once we know the impacts, how do we mitigate these impacts? Well, we are trying this out at the school, especially with our research group in nutrition and, and the couple of groups that I lead is on, um, on trying to understand how nutrition sensitive agriculture, which we know can improve diets, can be redesigned and, um, and, and repurposed to deliver interventions at scale to build resilience, especially among uh, vulnerable populations to the impacts of COVID-19 on food systems and therefore nutrition. We'll be trying this out as an add-on follow-up study to one of the recent trials we ended in India. As I said, COVID is a multi-systemic shock. Therefore, there are cascading risks. And we want to try and understand at the school probably is to uh, about the cascading risks and risk transmission 
posed by COVID along the food system and implications for nutrition outcomes. Of course, we need to take into account the complexity, uncertainty across systems and the interactions between these systems and data availability, as I said, which is even more a challenging uh, endeavor due to COVID-19 as we are all acutely feeling. But as this school, I think we are all up for this task and this challenge. Thank you for giving me this opportunity.